Hello, people who want to know the truth. We're going to talk about how narcissists and the no contact rule work together today. Let's find out what really happens when two people decide to split up. You may be familiar with the cycle of hoovering, devaluing, discarding, and idealizing. This is a standard way for narcissists to stay in charge. But here's what changes everything. If you go no contact, you can take back control of your story. You're telling the ego, I've had enough, and it's a step toward getting your power back. What happens if you try to take control? What does a narcissist do when they understand they're not in charge? Come with us as we find out the truth. Ring the bell, subscribe, and like this video to stay up to date. It's brave and upsetting for narcissists when you break up with them. In a well-oiled machine, it's like putting a wrench in it. Their plan depends on staying in charge and having someone they can control. You take away their power and let them know you're done with their game by cutting off touch. But be ready, because it's not an easy road. Get ready for rough weather. The narcissist could go off the rails, look for new attention, give in to boredom, anxiety, or sadness, deny the change, try to get you back, and yes, they could get angry. They won't let you go without a fight which makes things more interesting. They'll do anything to get you to come back. Keep reading to find out how to get through this storm and keep the freedom you've worked so hard for. Let's jump right in. It's the tried and true method of love bombing. People who are narcissists are known to use a technique called love bombing. This is how it usually goes. People who break up with narcissists often decide to stop talking to them right away. For the narcissist, this is not a time of strength and power. Instead, it's a time of weakness because they were turned down. Now come on the Hoover stage. Love bombing is the best way for a narcissist to get you to come back to them. Imagine telling them to stay away, but now they're doing everything they can to get your attention again. How well their plans work will depend on how closely they've been watching you and how self-centered they are. They might not notice your silence if they've already found a new source of supply. But if their new supply isn't enough, or if they miss the time they spent with you, they'll throw more charm at you. They will shower you with love, praise, and big promises that things will get better. Too many people fall for this old trick, which keeps them stuck in a bad loop. Love bombing is just their way of getting you to come back and think again about your choice. Their sneakiest trait is how well they can change. If love bombing doesn't work the first time, they'll try something else. Narcissists are master manipulators who are always coming up with new ways to stay in charge. Second, there is cold pity, which is also called trick insight. The selfish person Bob is still trying to get you to break up with him even after you've already done that. Meet Bob. He is very good at putting on a cold face of worry. He's very good at figuring out how you feel, but here's the catch, he doesn't really care. Instead, he's tricking you with his sharp mind. Now that Bob knows this, he starts to influence. He knows all of your darkest fears and weak spots and is eager to take advantage of them. Let's say you're scared of being by yourself. Bob is smart enough to know this and use it to his benefit. He texts you a lot which is a subtle way of telling you that he misses you. He uses your pain to make you feel like you have something in common with him. He always ends talks with things like our connection is unique and no one else could possibly understand. You'll be back under his power before you know it. While empathy generally means being kind and understanding, it can also be used to trick people. It might help Chris deal with a hostage scenario, but Bob, who is a narcissist, will use it to get what he wants from you. It seems almost impossible to get out of a bad relationship. According to data from a Florida shelter for battered women, most women have to try seven times before they can finally leave an abusive situation. This shows how hard it is to stay away from people who are harmful. It seems almost impossible to get away from them because they have such a tight hold on your feelings. The third trap is the shame trap which is also known as scheming with your mind. Think about the relationship between the narcissist and the victim, which is one of the main parts we've been talking about. You may have seen a friend or family member as the narcissist and yourself as the target. 
But let's look at things from the other side for a moment. Imagine that someone you care about a lot and who has never been selfish starts acting narcissistic all of a sudden. That person for me was my dad. If he showed any signs that he thought his life was in danger, I rushed to help him right away. This shows how narcissists take advantage of strong emotional bonds by making people feel guilty. If they want to get you back, they will do anything, like saying you have PTSD, are lonely, or are having money problems. Most of the time, these tactics work very well. Picture them desperately trying to get you to break the rule against touching them, but you won't give in. People try to control your feelings and thoughts by telling you things like you have PTSD and you're going to hurt yourself. Even though they try to get you to join their harmful web again, you refuse to give in. This situation shows how strong you are against their tactics based on guilt. 4. The Anger Shift A Variety of Strong Reactions Imagine that just when you think a narcissist has used all of their tricks against you, they change their strategy from making you feel bad to making you angry. As an example, look at this Reddit post. Reddit isn't always the most accurate source, but it does show what people are going through in real life. Someone told a story about an ex-lover they thought was a narcissist in one thread. When they were mad, the ex would do almost funny things, like slam their face into the dashboard of the car, trip over a bag of chips, or walk into a glass door and act like it hurt. The things that were done were typical of rage tantrums. What happens, though, when you don't talk for a while? There are different ways that the anger shows up. They could lie about you online, make up excuses for everything in front of family and friends, follow you around, threaten to sue you, or show off a new relationship that isn't real. What's the big deal? Like the meaning of crazy, doing the same thing over and over, and expecting a different outcome each time. The narcissist only wants to get back in touch with you. They work even harder to get away from you, the harder you try to stay away. They will try every trick in the book in the hopes that one of them will work and bring you back into their web of lies. Fifth, look at an ego who has tried everything. They have used everything from love bombing to cold pity to guilt trips and even anger. But you can see through their plans. What weapons do they still have? The last thing they can do is change. This is their hardest trick, only used on people who haven't given in to their other tricks. A narcissist acts like a chameleon, copying actions they've seen other people do. They aren't creative. Instead, they make up a character from traits they've seen other people have. They follow a four-step plan to act like they are genuinely changing, but it's really just a reflection of who they are. The public show is the first step. They livestream therapy meetings and volunteer work so that everyone, including you, can see how much they've grown. All of a sudden, they present themselves as masters in self-help. They might start a blog or YouTube page to show how grown up they have become. The next step is orchestrated weakness. They change how they act based on what you've asked for in the past, making it look like they care about your mental health and being kind, giving the impression that things are changing for the better. But behind the scenes, they don't say what their real goals are. After months, you can only see their actions from afar, even though they seem kind. But they're not done yet. In the third step, they keep in touch in a roundabout way. Instead of reaching out directly, they make sure that stories about how they changed get to you through shared friends or social media, which plays on your emotions. This complicated act takes advantage of your love and hope by making your beliefs work against you to get you to come back. Finally, their last move is direct interaction. When they don't talk to you for months, all of a sudden they show up in your texts as if nothing has changed, pulling you back into their web. The game of change is sneaky. It's meant to make fun of your darkest feelings. People who are narcissists will do anything to control other people. In fact, these relationships are very hurtful. It can be hard to notice these things when you're in love. But recognizing and talking about the abuse is important for getting better and building your self-esteem again. This word is meant to wake up people who might not be aware they are being abused. Without a doubt, you deserve better. Not only do you need to know how narcissists work, 
You also need to know your own worth and stand up for it. If this hits home for you, please like, share, and follow to get more posts like this. Let's get out of this loop and feel good about ourselves again.